Get out of the way, abominable focus placeholder. Hey, he's bounced. So, I've gotten pretty slack lately on the whole video log thing because mostly all the ones that I've been making for a while have been uh, pretty boring. There's mostly just my head in the middle of the screen and I'm going blah 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 about some nerdy bullshit. So to try to make it a little more interesting, I thought I'd bring along a friend. I'm Rachel and I live in Brooklyn, which is better than Dallas. Today we're going to be internet arguing about the new show on the sci-fi channel called Caprica. I am watching Caprica. And I'm not watching Caprica. And here's why. So Caprica is the spin-off of the reimagined Battlestar Galactica series. It's a prequel to the events that we saw depicted in that series. It's got primarily the same creative team behind it, but they've said for a number of reasons that they're going to be changing the focus and the overall mood of the show. I admit I really didn't follow the end of BSG. It when Starbuck turned into an angel, I sort of got confused a little bit, and I never really watched the ending of it until much later, and I kind of thought it was weird and sort of half funny, and I really didn't enjoy it all that much. So I'm probably not the best person to be commenting on Battlestar-related things, but I'm an opinionated bastard, so it goes. I love Battlestar Galactica. I think it's one of the better shows that was ever on television, and certainly the best show that was ever on the Sci-Fi Channel. The the sci-fi channel. So the first really cool thing that I like about Caprica is that for a show that purports to be for a more mainstream audience and is on a network that intentionally renamed itself from sci-fi to sci-fi to try and appeal to more people that wouldn't ordinarily watch the sci-fi channel, it has some serious hard sci-fi content. Uh, a persistent metaverse that people can access wirelessly, it's got transhuman uh, elements. Can we talk about Dollhouse yet? Of uh, human consciousnesses that get copied and put into machines, but they still retain some residual aspects and uh, self-awareness of their humanity. Mm. In episode two, they met a family that was in a group marriage. I mean, that's straight up Heinlein. Of course, like good sci-fi should do, it has interesting societal commentary. The world of Caprica is uh, rather uh, advanced in many ways, very backward in a lot of ways. It's not directly stated, but it seems as though there is a mandated state religion. People that don't follow the polytheistic state religion are seen as weirdos at best, and cultists or terrorists at worst. Many aspects of Capricorn society are overtly, openly racist. Uh, people uh, have no qualms about being outright hateful and dismissive of people from other colonies. Uh, yeah, what? Huh? What? Huh? I'm here. I'm listening. I'm totally listening. This is why I don't watch Capricorn. Caprica came out, I guess, last summer. The pilot has been available for a while. I never watched it. I was busy. I have a job and school and a thesis. And I actually never watched Battlestar Galactica at first. I think it went half of the first season before I started really getting into it. It was definitely the best show to ever come off the Sci-Fi Channel. I loved Starbuck. I loved the Galactica. I loved the way it looked. I liked that they dealt with uh, sort of small form parallel politics to what was going on in the real world. I think that's a very great job of literature in general and science fiction in particular dealing with you know the problems of humanity and I don't know I don't know if I don't know if Caprica offers that. Prequels are largely unnecessary and not needed. There are ways to make money off of something that has already been successful. And Adama's a, a little kid. I mean, come on, Adama's a little kid? No, Adama is a scraggly, face-pitted guy with teeth and glasses who yells at people, gets angry and drinks things and cries when he paints the wall. You know, that's Adama. He's not a little kid who goes to second grade and picks his nose. And you're supposed to learn that somehow all of our favorite main characters from original BSG have something intricately involved with the creation of 
you know, the toasters, you know, what, like 20, 30, 40 years beforehand? Like, that's stupid. And so what if you get to learn about the Cylons Christianity? I mean, okay, that's was explained in the final few episodes of BSG, which are largely some of the crappiest episodes of BSG. Uh, you know, when you get into all that metaphysical mumbo jumbo crap. I liked Battlestar Galactica because it had strong female characters. It had you know, flawed characters. It had relationships that didn't work. In a, in a way that wasn't a Romeo and Juliet type of thing. Starvation and famine and politics and rape and murder and racism and all of those things that make any type of fiction good. And they put it in space with cool flight suits and Hanes tank tops that they wore backwards and that was awesome. And I feel like Caprica is just going to be a bunch of people going in and out of office buildings in fashionable clothing. Thematically, I think it's kind of nice having a show that isn't confined to the walls of a ship. The coolest Battlestar Galactica episodes were the ones where they got out of the freaking ship. I mean, the one where they jumped into the atmosphere on New Caprica to rescue everybody was super badass. Getting away from the whole ship in a bottle, you know, it's like a submarine but in outer space kind of thing, and not a bad idea for mood and overall pacing of the show. And I heard that one of the reasons that they made Caprica the way that they did was to attract a female audience. They wanted to make a show about the same stuff that women would watch. I find that offensive. I know plenty of women. In fact, I think I know more women who like BSG than men. Uh, that's just my personal experience. I'm sure the numbers, you know, at the end are higher for men than women. But you're also talking about cable television and the sci-fi channel. And unfortunately, I don't think that women watch, especially housewives. And do you really want housewives to be watching your station sci-fi? I don't really understand why, instead of making good science fiction television, we insist on marketing towards a group of people that aren't interested in science fiction. Why not market to the people who are interested in science fiction? many of whom, like me, are women. I'd like to see some hardcore sci-fi and not people talking to robots about what makes them alive or not. Oh, but Toaster, I don't know how to help you. Oh, Toast! Because that's been done now for about 60 years. Not interested, it's not anything new. I mean, what makes you different than going to watch Avatar, Caprica? What makes you different? I really don't have a problem with the creator spinning it as a more mainstream accessible product because the people might actually watch it and it might stay on the air for longer than, oh, I don't know, one season or two seasons. Let's put someone from Whedon in there and then everyone will watch it. Hmm. There's some interesting casting decisions in it. Stunt casting doesn't work. I mean, it's got uh, uh, James Marsters. James Marsters isn't cool. Uh, the internet's love James Marsters. Have you seen him without when he doesn't look like Spike? First off, Spike isn't cool. So I wonder what accent he's going to use this time. Spike is a guy with a Billy Idol bleach job and a big leather coat that doesn't fit him. I mean, he's funny and all. But he's not really that cool. It's got Patton Oswalt in it. Can we just talk about Dollhouse, maybe? I'd rather. No? Who was freaking awesome in the two episodes of Dollhouse that he was in before that got canned. That just makes me think about poor Charisma Carpenter on The Legend of the Seeker, where they made her a Mord Sith, and they shoved her humongous boobs, humongous boobs, into uh, the Mord Sith costume, which if you've never seen Legend of the Seeker, they basically look like they shoved her into a hot dog casing, and she looked bad. I I don't know. Are they gonna? What are they gonna do to, to James Marsters? I'm sure it'll be just as embarrassing. So overall, I'm enjoying the crap out of the show. Uh, first two episodes have been really great. I'm following along, and it's one of the few shows that I actually remember to watch, uh, which says something for me, so it's quite cool and I'm interested to see how it turns out. Dollhouse is any indication no one will watch it. <laughs> uh, cancel joke, cancel joke.